project is an educational charity and it's about people working together and with each other working towards a better future. It was built in the year 2000, it was a Millennium Commission project and we wanted to build a project that was transformative. So we took a site, an old mine that was at the end of its useful life. The idea was to build the biggest greenhouses in the world and put it in this site, to have plants from the rainforest and to have crops from the rainforest, to have plants from the Mediterranean, crops from the Mediterranean and also a big outdoor environment. The co-founder, Sir Tim Smith, decided he wanted to put it in an old china clay pit because he wanted to create the biggest greenhouse in the world and put it in a hole where nobody could see it until they were, they were right here. Sounds simple? We needed some civil engineers to help us sort it out. The site we wanted to build was 15 metres below the water table. There was no soil. The site was better suited to mountain goats than to people. We wanted to build a major educational charity and visitor destination. When the engineers and the architects and we sat down together to talk about the project, I knew nothing about engineering, and we sat down with the engineers and everybody was scratching their heads. They said, hmm, it's underwater, so we're going to have to keep pumping the water out. So they came up with an ingenious method of putting wicks into these areas and squeezing them and pushing the water out so that the ground level would be really, really stable. The pit was being mined for China clay until the very, very last minute, so the ground itself was changing shape all the time. And I'm personally, I'm a horticulturalist, and we're always told to build greenhouses on surfaces that are absolutely level, and we couldn't find anything more difficult than trying to do it here. But this project was about transformation, about showing that difficult things could be done. And the engineers said, the easiest way to get an engineer to do something difficult is to tell them it couldn't be done. They had to find ways of cut and fill. We moved 1.8, they moved 1.8 million tonnes of ground material without taking anything off site, just by cutting it from one place, putting it in another. They used 12 dumper trucks and eight bulldozers and it was like a choreographed dance watching it happen. They were laughing and said it was the best sandpit they'd ever worked in in their lives. The engineers came up with an amazing idea. When you wash up and you're, and you're washing up, bubbles settle on your hands and bubbles will settle on any shaped surface. So the biomes were designed as complete bubbles and then they were cut off exactly where they met the surface of the ground. So the giant biomes you see are like giant bell tents. They actually move slightly and the engineers did a lot of computer modelling to show how the wind whistled through the pit and the effect on the biome would, would be to pull them upwards rather, rather than to push them over. So they had to design them like these bell tents and they built a ring beam around the bottom of each of the massive, massive biomes. And the biggest one is 100 metres high, 200 metres long and 50 metres wide with no internal supports because Eden is about sustainability and working with nature and working with each other for a better future. So the biome itself had to be built of sustainable materials and we decided the best way for that, the engineers told us, was to use less. The big biome, the rainforest biome, weighs about 450 tonnes and so does the air inside it. Very light structure. Eden is an educational charity and we want to show some of the messages that nature can show and nature, working with civil engineers, came up with the solutions. The biomes themselves are made of giant hexagons, just like a bee uses in a honeycomb. Maximum strength using minimum materials. The material in each of the hexagons, there is three pillows of ETFE, ethyl tetrafluoroethylene, a very light extruded plastic which can be recycled and transmits daylight, including ultraviolet, which is something the plants need to grow. The biomes were built using animal architecture as inspiration. We then wanted to build a building based on plant architecture. The civil engineers came up with a design which was the same as a sunflower. A sunflower isn't one flower, it's hundreds of flowers which have given up their individuality to create something better together, which is partly what Eden's about. So the core building is based on the structure of a sunflower. Again, worked out by one of our civil engineers over a weekend with a computer and a very large calculator. There was an extraordinary range of solutions, really ingenious solutions that the civil engineers came up with to enable Eden to happen. 
And when you come into the Eden Project, written on the gate is a big sign. Ordinary people trying to change the world. And to do that, we had to work with extraordinary people, the civil engineers, to make this happen. I came to Eden as a horticulturalist and a teacher. I didn't know anything about civil engineering. I thought it was a job for the boys. Now it's something I might have considered when I was younger. Now I've learned what they do. 